What's up guys, welcome back to another video. And today's video is gonna be a follow up to Tuesday's video, which was the installation of my push button start, keyless entry and remote start system. So I have to get this done quickly. It's getting to starting to, the sun's starting to set. It's five o'clock exactly. But here is the aftermath from that whole deal. So lots of crap everywhere it needs to be cleaned up. But anyway, we're gonna be going through an overview of everything that happened with the uh, push button start system, all the features it has. And I'm gonna tell you guys, is it worth it to go ahead and install this on not just a Gen 1 Sport Track like I've done, but any car that you can install it on. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna demonstrate is the keyless entry part of this whole thing. Uh, we have the fob here. So we're gonna start off with the lock, unlock button. Now the thing is, like I was saying in the installation video, this runs off the siren wire. This is supposed to have a siren with it, but it didn't come with one. So my dad splashed it into the horn wire. So when I hit the unlock button, it'll honk twice. Press the lock button, lock one, it'll honk once. So that's the keyless entry part of it. Now, there should be proximity sensors. I don't know if they're going to work. They've been kind of iffy. Um, it may work. It doesn't appear it wants to work today. But it's probably because I was within 10 feet of the truck and I tried to unlock it. So, um, the next thing I'm going to show off is the remote start feature. Now, the remote start feature is probably one of my favorite things. And it's very simple to work. So, when I start it up with the remote start, you simply have to be around 10 feet away from the truck. I've tried to remote start it from farther away. Uh, actually, I was able to remote start it from the front door of my house which is a little bit farther than 10 foot, but just do it. So we take the fob, hold the lock button for five seconds. The honk wants to tell you that it's running once you've done it. We'll do it again to tell you the truck. And then to turn it off, hold the button for five seconds. And it will turn off. So now, I will now demonstrate now there's a proximity sensor. So that worked now. So now we can hop inside and I'll demonstrate the actual functions of the button. So, I'm also five miles off from my next oil change, so I gotta get that done. So, the module is mounted underneath this piece in the center console. Um, basically, let's show you how the button works. So, the button is set up to have three different functions, accessory power, run, and the start. So, usually you have to wire in a brake pedal, but the method we chose in the video to install this there's no need for the brake pedal to be pressed. So, to so first off, we're gonna show off accessory power. So you tap the button once, and I'll crack the door open as I don't play the door chime, which I don't want to, it's really cold out, so. So now we're in accessory, it'll turn on the radio, and all that, it's a little chilly. I'm sorry if I'm sharing the camera, it's really cold. So then we have run, which will light up all the gauges and all that. And you hit the button again, it'll turn everything off and unlock the doors. So now to start the truck up, simply hold the button to start it on uh, this setup we have here. So apologies my tachometer, it's a little bit buggy, so I'm happy it'll work. But yeah, so that's the uh, start, the push button start system. Um, yeah, so that's the so then it turned off, simply hold the button down. It'll unlock the doors and the truck will turn off. So that's all of that for the push button. Now I'm gonna go into, is it worth the installation cost and all that. Um, actually, we didn't pay for installation, we did this ourselves. So is it worth the hassle of tearing your car apart? Or in this case, a Gen 1 Sport Track and um, do the mod. So let's go ahead and we'll hop out of here. We'll go inside the garage, it's a little bit warmer in there and uh, we'll continue on with that. All right, so now in the garage. So the kit that we went with, this was sold through a seller, I believe by the name of 36TD, or TV, one of the two. I uh, actually can't find the box now. <laughs> oh, there it is over there. So I'll find, I'll show you guys the part number and the name of the kit itself. Uh, it is the Smart Start Engine Start System. Um, it was available for $70 on Amazon. Um, I got this with Prime shipping as well, so that was always nice to have. 
It is the SQ886 kit, um, which includes everything with except for the um, the siren, of course, like I said earlier. Um, and in my opinion, for $70, there is not much better you can do to change your car, you know, drastically for a startup and keyless entry, remote start, all that stuff. It's very nice to have all those features so you can... You know, in the winter especially, like I'm probably gonna get some use out of this remote start feature on Sunday when we get ready for caffeine and octane. Um, Cause it's, it's already been obscenely cold this week. I can only imagine how it's gonna be Sunday morning at four. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, basically that. You know, the, for the cost, you know, the installation does take time and does take some electronic know-how. And for my dad, who has never attempted this before, but knowing how to wire stuff up, it did make the installation just a touch easier. Now, if he had done this before, could he get it done in one day? Absolutely. But the things that made the, the installation difficult for us and why it took so long and why the video was 37 minutes basically because of it was that there is no wiring diagram, which is why I included it in the video. Um, just so you guys had an idea of what wires to mess with and all that crap because we were basically playing by ear the entire time that video was going on. We were playing by ear, you know, installing stuff our own way than, you know, most people would do it and stuff like that. So, um, is, the, is, is it worth going through the hassle to install it? It really just depends on if you're willing to take the time out to do it because this was a two-day job. Um, it was not a simple, you know, we knocked it out at night and it was done. This was a two-day job that took up the most most of the weekend. So, um, depending on your skill level, it may be easier. Um, you may be able to knock it out in a day, maybe an maybe a overnight thing. Or, if you're someone who's never done it before or doesn't have the right diagrams to go off of, it will take some time. So, like I said, if you want to do it yourself and save the probably a hundred plus dollars on installation costs or something like this. You, you just need to, you, you just got to expect to take a bit longer. If you took it to a shop, they could probably knock it out in the afternoon because they know what they're doing. And, um, granted that will cost extra. So you're paying $70 for the kit and X amount of dollars to get installed. To me, I would just do it myself. That's exactly what we did at home. We installed it here and it came out great. Um, so, I guess that means it's time for us to review the product. So I'm gonna come over here and uh, prop my phone up here. My arm's getting tired. <laughs> I should have brought the tripod out, but I didn't. Um, is it worth installing? I believe so. Now, the reason I did it was, even though I had two keys for the truck, uh, one of my keys was damaged, uh, my factory key, which is on my ring right here. Uh, I can kind of try to show. So you can see right there, it's got a bit of a crease in it and the key is not sitting up straight. It's been like that since I got the truck. And uh, basically I just wanted to change things up a little bit. I'm a bit of a modernist and we wanted to do keyless entry on the truck and we had a system already, which is for sale now as well. Um, I'll probably throw it in in a later video. Um, it'll be on sale as well. A couple things, other things I have that I am going to be selling off as well. Um, the, for the, uh, for all that, so, but uh, anyway, we tore the door off to do the locks on that. We couldn't do it. We found out it's because we were in the wrong spot. Um, but we decided since we were already gonna need to tear apart the car anyway, we might as well go ahead and put the push button in because it is something I did want to do from the get go on that thing. So we decided to do it. We decided to go ahead and throw it in there and have it installed. Um, which is exactly why we uh, we did it. <laughs> and uh, despite how long it took and how we went into it blind, it was still a relatively smooth install. The only issues we were ran into was forgetting to install the remote start wire and wiring up the starter itself wrong, uh, which caused two problems. The remote start wise, it, grind, it tried to grind the starter um, as it was sending repetitive signals because we didn't wire up that remote start wire. It's funny because the remote start wire, the remote start wire was designed to tell the truck to not send repetitive signals to the starter. Um, it will remote start without that wire, but like I was saying, it will grind the starter out. It will try to kill your starter. Um, 
So that is one thing you gotta be pay attention to. You gotta really pay attention to what you're wiring up to which wire. That's really the only difficult thing about the install. It is not the placements of everything. It is the actual wiring. Um, and like I said, I included the full diagram in the, in the install video. So if you're wanting to do this for yourself, be sure to go check that video out. I know it was long, but it goes through pretty much every detail that we could uh, of the install itself. Um, so should you buy one? Absolutely. I think if you're wanting to change your car up and make it a bit different and add a nice change of pace to the car and you don't want to go under the hood and mess with your engine, I think it's a pretty good way to do it, especially especially if you don't have keyless entry as it is. Um, cars like mine, uh, my XLS truck, did not come with it. So we were like, why not? <laughs> so I like it. It's very fun. I've enjoyed the last few days with it. The only complaint I really have is the fact that the this is something that we did. It does not have something to do with the kit itself. Is if my horn's obnoxiously loud when it uses the siren function. Um, I have heard it echo throughout my neighborhood. I've heard it echo from the gas station, and I've darn I've freaking woke up Hayden's parents with it multiple times, uh, leaving their house with my horn whenever it honks to unlock the truck. Now there is a mute mode to fix that. I haven't figured out how to turn it on because I probably will turn it on whenever I go to Hayden's now and once I figure it out. But Anyway, guys, that wraps up this follow-up video to the install. Hope you guys enjoy that video as well as this one. Be sure to go follow me on Twitter and Instagram, uh, which are found in the outro to go ahead and see more of this truck because we've got a lot coming next year for this thing with the engine project coming in, uh, built engine completely from the bottom up for the most part. I don't, I'm not doing a built block, but the pistons and everything else will be different. Um, and I'm working on a little project with Josh. Um, if you guys don't know who Josh is, he runs my sponsor, Online Parts Pro. He is now able to sell fully fleshed out turbo kits for the cars. Now, granted, I'm stuck between turbo and centrifugal supercharger. I thought about Roots, but the problem with the Roots blower is it will favor it'll favor the 4.0's power band, which is all down low. But I want something more top end that give me a bit more punch up top because the 4.0 will lose its power band down, will, will completely just fall on its face after three grand. So I'm stuck between centrifugal and turbo because I want something reliable and instant torque that'll be still be good to drive on the road because it is going to still be a daily driver. So I'm really thinking pro charger, but um, we'll be working something out if we go turbo and he will, of course, be helping with the install. Um, he has said already that when we decide to mod the truck out, he will be here for it and uh, we'll more than likely wind up using Hayden's shop. We'll have to talk with him more because we're going to need a lot of space to store everything and get everything on. So all that said, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. And be sure to subscribe for more, more sport track content, more Atlanta car meet content, all that kind of crap. And we'll see you guys next time.